The story of Spain is one of religious ebb and flow, a history shaped by conquest, conflict, and coexistence. Today, Spain is at the crossroads of an intriguing revival. Islam is once again growing in the country, centuries after its once thriving presence was forcibly extinguished. This modern resurgence of Islam begs a crucial question. What does the future hold for Christianity in Spain, a nation that has long been a bastion of Catholicism? Spain was under Islamic rule for 800 years. In that time, it flourished as a center for learning and the arts. Islam was the dominant religion, but other faiths were tolerated. That phenomenon is known in Spanish as convivencia, which means living together. Let's take a closer look at this dynamic and explore the factors at play. Imagine a Spain where mosques and minarets pepper the skyline and the echoes of the call to prayer mingle with church bells. This isn't a scene from medieval Al-Andalus, but modern-day Spain. Over the last few decades, the country has witnessed a significant rise in its Muslim population with nearly 2 million Muslims, about 4% of Spain's total population, calling it home today. The roots of this modern revival trace back to immigration from North Africa, the Middle East, and South Asia, predominantly from Morocco, Algeria, and Pakistan. While some may view this as a recent development, history reminds us of Islam's deep connection with Spain. Tariq ibn Ziyad, rahimahullah, following the commands of his leader, whose name was Musa bin Nusayr, who was the leader of, of the Muslims in North Africa at the time, went across the Straits, which is now known as Gibraltar. And they were actually responding to um, a cry that was being given by monotheistic people who were living in the Iberian Peninsula. For nearly 800 years, Muslims governed vast portions of the Iberian Peninsula during the era of Al-Andalus, 711 to 1492 a period marked by remarkable advancements in science, philosophy, medicine, and the arts. In the treaty, it clearly states that the Christians and the Jews would maintain their, their, their synagogues and churches, that just about all of the slaves in the city were immediately freed. When this treaty came about, the people were, you know, were, were, were joyous. The taxes that were on them in Roderick's time were lifted from them. This era produced some of the greatest minds in Islamic history, scholars whose works left an indelible mark, not just on Spain, but on the world. One such figure is Ibn Rushd Averroes, born in Cordoba in 1126. A polymath, Ibn Rushd's contributions spanned fields such as philosophy, medicine, and law. His works, particularly his commentaries on Aristotle, were highly influential in both the Islamic and Christian worlds, shaping European intellectual thought during the Renaissance. Another giant of this era was Ibn Arabi, also born in Murcia in 1165, whose mystical writings have earned him the title of the greatest master, al-Sheikh al-Akbar, within the Sufi tradition. Ibn Arabi's deep spiritual insights on the unity of existence profoundly influenced Islamic thought, and his works continue to be studied by scholars and spiritual seekers worldwide. Al-Zarawi, Abu al-Qasim, also from Cordoba, is often regarded as the father of modern surgery. His groundbreaking medical encyclopedia, Al-Tasrif, served as the foundational medical text in Europe for centuries, influencing medical practice well into the Renaissance. Additionally, there was Ibn Hazm, 
another intellectual force from Cordoba, whose works in theology, jurisprudence, and poetry showcase the diverse scholarly output of Al-Andalus. His treatise on love, The Ring of the Dove, remains one of the most cherished pieces of Arabic literature. These scholars were part of a flourishing intellectual landscape where Muslims, Christians, and Jews collaborated and debated in centers of learning like Cordoba, Seville, and Toledo. During this time, Al-Andalus became a beacon of knowledge, tolerance, and cultural fusion. The echoes of this golden age still linger in modern Spain as Islam re-emerges as a significant force. As mosques rise once more and Islamic institutions thrive, this revival draws from the rich intellectual heritage of Al-Andalus. Today, over 1,700 mosques and Islamic prayer centers can be found across Spain, with many located in bustling urban centers like Madrid, Barcelona, and Valencia. The Union of Islamic Communities of Spain continues to report growth in these spaces, marking a shift in the nation's religious makeup that is hard to ignore. Then it grew, it grew, and it grew not only in our families, because we are already on the fourth generation, but also um, our commitment since the very beginning was to, to show Islam to the society. So it means we have a lot of shahadas. A shahada. Allah ilaha illa Allah. A shahada. Allah. Sayyidina Muhammad. Abdu. With this resurgence comes complexity. Despite the growing number of Muslims, life for many within the community isn't without its struggles. The question of identity looms large. Many Muslims in Spain are second or third generation immigrants, grappling with a dual identity, torn between their cultural heritage and their Spanish surroundings. In a nation with deep Catholic roots, integrating into broader society often proves difficult. Cultural differences and religious prejudice remain barriers. Although Spain has made efforts to encourage interfaith dialogue, tensions still simmer. It's not uncommon to see public debates around religious attire or the building of mosques, issues that frequently spark controversy. For a country that once prided itself on being the Catholic heart of Europe, this growing Muslim presence feels, to some, like an unfamiliar reality. We keep doing the same thing. We went to pray at the Alhambra. The security guards they came and told us not to pray there anymore. So after that is when Sheikh Hadar Qadir said, OK, you have to build your own mosque. People started to travel uh, to different countries in order to find uh, um, help, in order to buy this land. This is all the news on the newspapers in Madrid, Barcelona, talking badly about uh, the building of, uh, of the mosque in Granada. So it was all over the newspapers. And, but Alhamdulillah, Allah makes everything happen. And now is the opposite. We have very good relation with the, all the neighbors. And in Ramadan especially, for we share food together. And we have a list of all the neighbors around uh, this area that is in need. And that's why they, they love us, because uh, nobody is looking after them. As Islam grows, Spain's long-standing Catholic tradition is facing its own challenges. Declining faith among the Spanish people is threatening a longtime pillar of the Catholic Church, its cloistered convents. Jeffrey Brown has that story. It's part of our continuing series, Culture at Risk. The country is no longer the fervent Christian stronghold it once was. According to recent statistics, only 60% of Spaniards now identify as Catholic, a striking departure from the near-universal Catholicism of the mid-20th century. Even more telling is that among those who still identify as Catholic, only 22% regularly attend church. The faith of the people in this country has really gone down, and we have very few people coming into churches. Most of the churches are closing, they are being turned in. Secularism is on the rise. A substantial portion of the population, over 27%, now consider themselves atheist, agnostic, or non-religious. 
In this climate, the Catholic Church is struggling to maintain its influence. Sunday Masses are increasingly empty, and traditional religious practices are losing their grip on Spanish society. The decline of Catholicism in Spain reflects a broader European trend, where religion is slowly being replaced by secular values. For many, faith has become more of a cultural marker than a spiritual journey. One example of this is the enduring popularity of religious festivals like Semana Santa, Holy Week, which continues to draw crowds of millions, not necessarily for religious devotion but more for cultural spectacle. So, what does this mean for Spain's future? Will Islam rise once again to become a dominant force? Or will secularization continue to erode the influence of both Islam and Christianity? The answers are far from clear, but what is undeniable is that Spain is undergoing a profound transformation. The country's religious landscape is shifting, and with it, the very essence of Spanish identity. In cities where cathedrals stand side by side with mosques, a new balance is emerging, a balance between Islam, Christianity, and a growing secular movement. Could Spain return to a model of coexistence akin to Al-Andalus, where Muslims, Christians, and Jews thrive together in cultural and intellectual harmony? Or is Spain heading towards deeper religious and ideological divides, as secularism continues to pull society away from traditional faiths? Spain's future, like its past, will likely be shaped by both cooperation and conflict. But one thing is clear. Religion is not disappearing from the national conversation anytime soon. Islam's resurgence and Christianity's decline will continue to shape Spain's cultural, social, and political spheres for years to come. As we look ahead, we are left with more questions than answers. Will the mosques continue to rise? Will the cathedrals maintain their cultural relevance? Or will a new, secular Spain emerge, where religious institutions play only a peripheral role? What do you think? Can Spain embrace this evolving religious landscape? Or will tensions increase as faith and secularism vie for influence? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into history, culture, and the forces that shape our world. Super.